this lecture we will uh, talk about uh, Prevet and Sobel edge detection. So this is continuation of our last lecture where we were talking about edge detection. And we have already covered like uh, the background which is required to perform edge detection. And uh, we will be covering four different algorithms which will be used to uh, do edge detection. So we'll start with Privet and Sobel edge. And then later on, we'll move to Kenny edge detection. And we have one more uh, Mar Hill uh, edge detection. Okay, so let, let's begin. Basically, uh, Privet and Sobel, both of these edge detectors, they are almost similar. There is a very slight variation between these two. And so the, the filters which we use for performing uh, edge detection in these two algorithms, they, the filters are different, but the steps are exactly the same. Okay? Now, the whole algorithm, we can just uh, list that, uh, that as a set of these steps. The first step is we'll compute derivatives of, of your input image, and we'll compute in x direction, in y direction. And we, once we have these uh, derivatives, we'll compute the magnitude. We, we, we studied last lecture, like how we can compute a magnitude of a gradient. And then we will use a threshold uh, on these uh, on these gradient magnitudes, which will decide whether it's an edge or not. Okay, so these are like the basic three steps which will be used in both these algorithms. And all this like uh, this process we have already covered like using uh, several other filters uh, in, in the previous lecture. Okay, so let's do a quick recap uh, before we uh, go into the algorithm itself. Now, we, we talked about how we can convert continuous uh, derivatives to discrete derivatives, and we talked about three different variations where we have backward difference, we have forward difference, and then we have central difference. And we also saw that how we can represent these three different filters as a derivative mask. Okay, so for backward difference, we have a negative one and one. Uh, the second one is a forward difference, and third one is a central difference. And we know that if we use these filters, uh, these filters to perform filtering on any input image, these are going to give us derivatives of of that image. All right. So those filters, uh, which we just saw, they were one dimensional filters, but images actually in two D space. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to compute derivative in two different dimensions, and there we. Uh, so last time that how we can compute gradient vector, which is again, uh, it, it looks fancy, but if you think about this, it's just partial derivative in these directions independently. And we just put these two derivatives as a vector. Okay. And once we have this, we can compute gradient magnitude. We will see how this is useful in determining whether it's an edge or not. And we can also compute a gradient direction. And there were a couple of questions, I think, uh, from some of you asking whether this equation is wrong, uh, is wrong. And so f y over f x is also fine. The, the idea here is we want to compute the orientation of the edge, or you can say uh, the direction of the gradient. And if we switch like between f x and f y, of course it will give you a different value. But again, both two are like dependent on each other. If you have orientation using f x over f y, you can easily subtract that maybe if it's uh, if it's in degrees, you can subtract that from 90, that will give you the value which you're going to get using Fy over Fx, right? So it's just a representation. And if you're computing Fx over Fy, it means you are computing the orientation with respect to the y-axis. And if you compute Fy over Fx, again, it will be the orientation, but, but uh, with respect to x-axis. So that's the only difference, all right? So it doesn't matter like uh, how you compute it. But whatever you do, be consistent in like all the steps you are using throughout your algorithm. And then we saw a very a simple uh, sample here. If this is your input image and you compute your X and Y derivatives. So this is something which you will get. And here we can see that uh, this is kind of giving you the horizontal edges which are present in the input image. And this one is uh, giving the vertical edges. And this is uh, using a Laplace operator, which is kind of double derivative. We are also going to cover this uh, in today's lecture. Okay, so with that background, le uh, let's directly jump to a private edge detector. And we already saw the steps which are required to compute uh, edges using this algorithm, but let's quickly go through uh, all these steps one by one. You will have your input image. The first step is you will perform smoothing in let's say X direction, and which is going to give you a blurred image. Okay, you know that mean we have we have seen this earlier as well, like smoothing of 
your signal actually helps you in detecting edges. Then you will compute a derivative in x direction, which will give you edges in the x direction. Similarly, you will repeat the same step for the uh, y axis. And again, in this case, you will smooth uh, along y axis, which will give you blurred image. You will compute derivative in y direction. So it will give you like edges in y direction. And you can then combine these two together to get like the derivative map. Now, if you look at like the filters which are used in this algorithm, uh, we have all ones, uh, which is going to smooth your image. And for derivative, you have a one and negative one. So this mask we have seen before, this gives you edges in the x, uh, in the x direction. All right. So one way is you can actually first perform smoothing using this filter, filter, and then you can perform like the you can uh, you can operate this derivative mask on this blurred image to get the edges. The other way, which is like an optimized version, is you don't have to perform two different steps. You can actually combine these two filters as a single filter. And then what you can do is just use this filter on the input image, and that is going to give you edges. All right. So this is also you have seen like the associative property of uh, convolution or correlation, right? So if you are operating, uh, if you are like uh, using two different filters on the image, you can actually combine the filters together to actually perform filtering and then use that filter on the image. So we, we studied those properties in one of the lecture and this is exactly doing the same. Now you will think about like uh, how we can actually get this filter using these two filters. And basically it, it seems non-trivial, but if you just take like paper, paper, uh, paper and pen and you just, take maybe one of these as image patches and the other as a filter and perform this filtering operation. You are going to get this filter. You might get like a slightly different. I think the direction will be different. Instead of one over here, it will be uh, all negative. And instead of all negative ones, it will be all ones, but th that doesn't matter. I mean, we have, we have talked about that. It doesn't matter whether you use forward, uh, forward difference or backward difference. The result is not going to change. Okay, so the idea will be what you will do Let's say you consider this as your image patch and this as your filter, and which, which seems like an obvious choice because this is like a smaller, uh, smaller dimension filter. So in that case, what will happen is first you will have to perform padding on this patch. All right, so padding we studied, I think, in one of the lecture where uh, you have to perform filtering and you have the edges. So how to deal with that? So in this case, let's say you put like uh, all zeros in the border. And then that will give you like a bigger patch. And then you will be able to put this filter on each and every location in this, in this input uh, image patch. And after performing filtering, you will exactly get this filter. Okay. So if you, you can, you can try like that, that, that is a homework. Uh, if you have any questions, any doubt, we can, we can take those later. Similarly, you can perform the same set of steps uh, in the Y direction. So in this case, your smoothing operator will be uh, again, all ones. So this kind this kind of a variation of a box filter and again this is the uh, derivative mask in y direction and uh, you can in fact perform these two steps as a single step just using this filter okay so that was private edge detector so will edge detector uh, exactly the same uh, set of steps you have image you perform uh, smoothing that will give you blood image derivative in x same for y the only difference is the filter which you are using to perform smoothing. The private edge detector actually uses a box filter where all the values are one, which means that it's actually giving equal weightage to all the neighborhood pixels. In this case, we are actually giving more weightage to the current location. All right. And the derivative mask, it, it remains the same. And again, if you use, uh, if you, if you try to combine these two, you will get this filter, which again, you can just use a one single step to perform. So will edge filtering. Same is true for bi direction. Okay. So it's the same derivative uh, filter, but the smoothing operation is slightly different. Instead of having all ones, instead of having box filter, we have this kind of weighted filter here, which is giving more weightage to the current location. Okay. So that was so will edge detector. Now let's uh, try to cover the rest of the steps. Uh, how you can actually determine whether it's an edge or not. So it's pretty straightforward. You have the input image. You know, uh, you have these filters. You don't have to perform them, uh, all those steps separately. So just apply this. You will get like derivative in uh, X direction. 
And this is going to give you derivative in y direction, which means to say like edges in x and edges in y direction. Then you can compute the magnitude of those edges. All right, you know that if you have to compute derivative in an image, uh, we, we, we just revised today, like how you can compute the magnitude. So you just square the values and take the square root. So you will do this for all the pixel locations. And then you will have to set some threshold, which will say that, okay, if the magnitude of the gradient is greater than this value, it's an edge. If the magnitude is lower than this value, it's not an edge. So it's basically just a thresholding and you'll have to do this manually. Uh, there are ways to automate this process, which we will uh, talk about, I think, later in one of the later lectures. But right now, I mean, just assume that you have to set this uh, manually and that's going to give you edges. Now, let's look at like a simple example here. Let's say if this is your input image, if you compute your derivatives in x direction, uh, that's the output. If you compute uh, derivatives in y direction, you will get something like this. And then you can compute magnitude, which means to say for each pixel, you will actually square the value in corresponding uh, these maps, take the square root, and that's going to give you just one single map. Okay, so that's the step. And once you have this, then you can see that like some of the pixel values are actually pretty high and some are pretty low, and most of these are black. So the dark pixels are actually a uh, background, which means that there is no edge. The, the brighter pixels are saying there was, there was definitely an edge. And then in between, we have this like the gray region, which is kind of, it could be an edge, it couldn't be an edge. So that's where the threshold, uh, threshold play a very important role. And depending upon what threshold you use, your edge detection uh, result will uh, differ. For example, if I say the threshold is 100, and this threshold is uh, on these activations here, so you will get something like this, which is showing you the edges which are being determined by this algorithms. Okay. Now, how this threshold will change the output? If you lower the threshold, then you will actually get more edges. And if you increase the threshold, the number of edges which are detected will be uh, slightly lower. Now we have seen this uh, plot earlier. This is the way, like one of the ways uh, to come uh, to evaluate the performance of your edge detection algorithm. And this green dot over here is a uh, human performance on this uh, data set. And uh, if you look at this, like the Sobel and Privet, I think we briefly covered uh, this on the last, last lecture as well. So they are almost at the same time, uh, 68 and uh, 70, uh, but the performance is almost similar, 0.48 and 0.48, okay? Thank you.